Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And in today's video, thank you to you guys on Discord who let me know I actually don't have a guide on one of the best champions in the game. One of the most hyped champions in the game. Your reward for beating Faction Wars. I actually think her ratings are better than this, to be honest. Fantastic champion though, Lydia the Death Siren. S tier, pretty much across the board. Let's dive in here. Let me show you, well, walk you through her skill kit and then show you how I build her and how I use her in a couple of different areas in the game. Uh, she's actually so, got so much going on. You can really build her up for multiple different areas and to do different things. So I'll show you what I do. Uh, her A1, oppression, wall of text, right? Attacks one enemy. We're going to assume that you've booked her. She's one of the best champs in the game. Of course, you're going to book her and you're going to be putting her in your best gear possible. You're going to be very far into the game by the time you get her. Probably, you know, at least a year, most likely a year and a half, possibly even two or more years, right? That's just the way it is. Attacks one enemy, 100% chance to fear for a turn, and then also increase poison sensitivity. Then it has a passive effect, wall of text. Basically, whenever an enemy freezes, stuns, fears, true fears, or petrifies you, she will counterattack them. If they do this to more than one of your team at the same time, she'll then start doing random counterattacks. She'll only hit each enemy once, but it's kind of cool. She can end up actually spreading fears all over the place, which can be pretty powerful in the arena. Uh, one thing for sure for Hydra, when you look at this one, um, is, well, the Head of Torment. Whenever you attack him without Perfect Veil on, he does place a true fear on you. So Lydia will always counterattack with her A1 when that happens. Um, it can be a bit awkward then. If she doesn't have Perfect Veil, she too will get true feared. And that can definitely mess you up because you really don't want her to miss her supportive skills. But you can also, at the same time, really exploit that. She makes a very good combo with Inquisitor Shemail for Hydra. I'm going to show that off here today. Uh, her A2, Siren's Whale, three turn cooldown. One of the best moves in the game. AoE attack, she's void, so no weak hit issues. I mean, Poison Cloud and Hydra, yeah. But, you know, it's good. 100% chance when booked to putting decreased defense and weaken for two turns. And also, strengthen and increase speed on all allies for two turns. This move has it all. An AoE decreased defense and weaken on a three turn cooldown is like a top tier ability for a legendary champion just on its own. Strengthen and increase speed is pretty legit legendary ability on a three turn cooldown as well. That's pretty good. Having all of this together is just nuts. There is so much value here with this champion. And this is this move in particular is what really pushes her into so many teams. You can use it for the defensive side um, and you don't necessarily need the offensive side or we can use her with like Seer in Doom Tower. I'm gonna show that off as well, where she brings a decreased defense and weaken, but also buffs for Seer to rip off and, and makes that very effective. Uh, her A3 then, three turn cooldown as well when booked. Double hitter, first hit, poison sensitivity for two turns, second hit, block buffs and block active skills. So again, the block buffs, block active skills, that's quite good for Arena. The poison sensitivity is definitely more niche. You can absolutely use Lydia in a clan boss team and she's in some really good teams. I think that's more of a luxury. Uh, I wouldn't recommend building her that way unless you're super end game and you've got nothing else to do. Um, I feel like but it, it's going to be weird. <laughs> Let me know if you've ever heard of anyone in this situation. But I think to be able to beat Faction Wars and get Lydia, but somehow not have a good Ultra Nightmare clan boss team, I don't know how that would happen. But if it did, I guess Lydia would help you there. The poison sensitivity is good. She brings lots of defensive buffs. and uh, Yeah, she can function in clan boss really well if you want her to. She's a great speed booster, brings all these debuffs, the poison sensitivity, it's good. Uh, Death Hold then, her passive, has a three turn cooldown effect on it procking. Uh, or sorry, seven turn cooldown on it procking. Derp, derp, derp. Uh, this is very powerful, particularly in Arena. It's also useful for uh, Doom Tower as well. Deny enemy revive attempts. This works even if this champion is dead. And this skill also ignores uh, block revive as well when she revives people. So if she's alive and she denies a revive, she will revive all of your dead teammates at 50% HP and turn meter. And again, that ignores block revive. So let's say there's a Mortu Macab or a Foley, someone like that who's come in, they've nuked your team, they've maybe blocked revive on one of them. She will still revive if she's alive and denies an enemy revive. That revive will go off anyway. Uh, gives her an extra turn if there's nobody dead. That's kind of useful. 
Um, and yeah, if she is dead and an enemy revive is denied, it revives her instead. This move, it get, it's very strong for Arena. It can really mess up enemy teams. Um, yeah, blocking their revive, essentially. It, it gets, gives you a chance to get ahead, to knock them down and take them out while they're missing a key member of their squad. So it's very powerful. And she does have an extremely good aura. This is the best resistance aura in Arena in the game. I don't have her awakened right now, but for blessings, it sort of depends on where you're going to use her. Intimidating presence, definitely not a bad one. Gonna strengthen that aura, good for a defensive team. Gives her defense, HP, resist, and speed. That's definitely a strong option. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting. I'm not sure exactly what I would do. I, I do think Polymorph could be a good one, depending on build. Polymorph is the best defensive blessing in the game, but you're probably going to be running her if you're going to use her for arena defense. You're probably using her in the lead, and you're probably building a high resistance team, in which case, you know, you have to get debuffed for the sheep stuff to go off. So it's a bit of a maybe. Could be a good option, though, to put off teams who are going to go, okay, it's a slower resist-based team. Let's bring in, like, a Lady Kimmy, bring in increased accuracy. You could just run her with Polymorph anyway, especially in the lead. That's the best place for Polymorph to be. So those would be the two I'd be sort of drawing attention to, which I think are particularly good. Uh, others I probably wouldn't use. I mean, Life Harvest maybe could be kind of fun, but I don't think it's really that worthwhile. But, you know, just for stopping, really bringing her as a counter revive, I don't think it's worthwhile, though. I stick to those two for the most part. Let's look at how I've built her then. So the way I have built my Lydia is really specific for Hydra. So you can see probably at a quick glance, this is not a Lydia, which is built particularly well for Arena. I could sub her in. She'd be okay. But in, you know, main part, we're missing reaction accessories. So if we used her in a go second team, she's just going to die, right? What I've done though, I've built her for Hydra. So if we look at her total stats, this is what we've got. 63,000 health, 3,000 defense, 266 speed. I actually have her with a good chunk of crit rate, though I don't have any crit damage, 490 resistance, and about 381 accuracy. The key stats here, she's actually plenty tanky enough that th this is really good. Even for Nightmare Hydra, she's totally good like this because with the resistance as well, she's not going to get debuffed. She's just not going to die. She's certainly not going to be the first of your team to die anyway. If Lydia goes down, your whole team is probably going to be dead with these stats. So I actually gave her some crit rate to just squeeze a bit of extra damage out. The key things then, uh, pretty much all of these are key things. Building up to 500 resistance, that's mischief tank level for Nightmare Hydra. It's per perhaps a little bit overkill because she's not the mischief tank, but it's just going to make you super safe. She's never going to have her, deep, uh, her buffs stolen. She's never going to be targeted. So it's something to consider. About 400 accuracy is really the target for, again, Nightmare Hydra. I'm a little bit low there. We'd like to have it a little bit higher. She's going to have a small chance for failure, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. And like I said, plenty tanky. And I do like her to be this nice high speed for Doom Tower waves and, again, for Hydra. So I'll be aiming for stats somewhat like this. You can, you know, drop off some of the health and defense, be a little bit squishier, but it's something to look at. If you're building her for Arena, it depends, right? It depends what you want her to do. If you're bringing her in just for her passive and her aura and the defensive buffs in certain teams, you might really build her with just really high resistance, decent speed and tankiness and reaction accessories. Uh, you could even, you know, drop the accuracy a good bit. Um, it will depend. I think that's one of the problems, right? If you're going to bring her into Arena, the decreased defense weaken is not in most teams going to be that super useful because really for end game Arena teams, which is what you're going to be facing with, you know, by the time you get Lydia, um, they're going to have block buffs or block debuffs. They're going to have cleansers. They're going to have stuff like that. High resistance champions. It's going to be hard to land these debuffs. Um, if you don't have a buff stripper, I'd say in like a speed team, something like that, Madam Saris would be her main competitor here for decreased defense, but she's going to do the buff strip. So for an offensive base team, I think having buff strip and decreased defense is going to be more valuable than Lydia. You get decreased defense and weaken, but if they've got stone skin, it's not going to help all that. So not a huge fan of her for a speed team. And also this is a, an attack 
So it will wake up enemies if you're with a Kaimar and you sleep. Stuff to consider. Anyway, this is for my Hydra uh, Masteries. This is what I like to run. So we do run down into War Master. It's going to give her a good chunk, pretty good chunk of extra damage. You could skip that if you really wanted to. It's not going to help her in the arena. And you could send her down the defensive tree. Maybe grab Unshakable, something like that. That's a viable option as well. I like her to have War Master, but it's up to you. And then we're setting her down the support tree. Um, and it get quite interesting here. I'm actually probably going to redo her masteries if I can glyph up her accuracy a little bit more. Get her up to 400. I want to ditch Swarm Smiter and actually take Rapid Response instead. I think that is the ideal where she's going to get lots of turn meter from buffs. She's going to get turn meter when her debuffs expire. Bonus accuracy here. More accuracy with no skills on cooldown. In fact, she probably, you know what? Let's actually reset it right now. So this is this should be better here. If we do like this, oh, don't grab that. Grab this so we can come across to rapid response. We're gonna grab this right here. Lore of Steel and then Cycle of Magic. The reason being we want to extend her buffs, extend the increase speed and strength in. We want to extend her debuffs as well. Perfect, that looks great. And then we can come across here. I'm gonna stick the same way. We're gonna grab the crit rate. We're gonna grab some crit damage. Uh, here you could go either way. You could totally get her life drinker or you could get her more damage to targets at low HP. Uh, I'm just gonna get her more damage to targets at low HP because she's not gonna use the life drinker all that much. And we're gonna grab War Master. I think that looks quite good. So there we go, a bit more turn meter. I figure, you know, she's gonna have the bonus accuracy most of the time. I think it's good. We'll glyph up the rest as well, just to double check. But yeah, there's the gist. You can see, let me see, do we even have room for glyphs? A bit, a bit right there. We're looking for pieces with speed, accuracy, and resistance really is what we're looking for. We go speed, resistance. You can see there's more room to glyph for speed. Bit more room there for accuracy glyphing. Okay, ooh, lots of room for accuracy glyphing. Crit rate gloves, like I said, just for PVE, make her hit a bit harder. Resistance chest plate and speed boots. And then we have her with a defense ring, HP neck. It really depends what pieces of gear you have in these sets, how they roll. Uh, again, with the neck, looking for resistance accuracy. With the ring, looking for defense, HP. It's not a great ring, actually. We could improve it. Resistance banner here with lots of speed and some defensive stats. You get the gist. If you're running her just for dungeons, you can also build her differently too. You can build her to nuke. You can just build her high crit rate, crit damage, and attack. And then so long as she's faster than your nukers, that can work really well. And she probably only needs about 220 accuracy for dungeons. She does hit pretty hard, so you can totally build her that way. It's just not gonna be useful really anywhere else. Uh, but some people do. I don't like it. So let's take a look at her. Let's see what she can do. Why are your circle pack? Oh, that's like a, oh, that's kind of fun. It's a different one, a personal builder one. Yeah, it's pretty bad though. Go away. <laughs> I don't think that's great. Um, anyway, let's dive in. Doom Tower. I see some gameplay. So, and the typical, I'm going to go a bit further back because I don't have my, t my Seer built super well. She's not good enough for the higher waves, but this is the sort of team. And this is exactly where you're going to be using Lydia. So the concept here is we're going to go in. I can even show you the presets. We're going to have Under Priest Brogni, who's going to give us block debuffs, increase attack and shield. That's three buffs for Seer to rip off. And he gives us a useful aura. Duchess is much better, but I don't have a Duchess. She's got a better aura for this. Uh, he's just going to do that on the waves. Lydia is going to come in. Uh, she is going to be decreased defense and weaken on the enemies, make them take more damage. And again, two more buffs for Seer to rip off. In this situation, if you're building her just for this sort of team, a shield set's probably the best, right? You want one shield set if you can. I used to have it on Brogni. I switched him into Bolster, um, you know, for PvP, for Arena. It is how it is. Uh, we've got Prince Kaimar. We're going to turn off his seal, seal of Magic. Wave 2, I actually turn it off again, and then I have him Seal of Magic on Wave 3. Seer's going to come in and set up like this just to nuke with Karma Burn. And then I actually have a Renegade, so I don't have two Kaimars. He's going to reset on wave two. So we'll come in here. There can be a bit of randomness uh, on the second wave because uh, Seer might not get Karma Burn back. We might need to run it a couple of times. But here you go. You can see Lydia comes in, decreased defense and weaken. The buffs go on and bam, Seer rips it off and kills them all. It's such a good combo. It's such a powerful combo. Very potent, very difficult to deal with. Uh, okay, Seer, we would need to, you know, proc the mastery to reduce her cooldown or get an extra turn. Yeah, so this might take a while. It's a bad example, perhaps, but you get the idea of how this team works. We'll probably still win, I think. Depends how hard she hits. Eh, not too bad. 
I think we'll probably still manage to do it so long as Seer doesn't die. A little bit awkward now because the buffs are going to fall off. Strip it off. Uh, we mostly kill them. Bad example on this wave. We'll go again because she, she got frozen. A bit annoying. Uh, let's run again. Be right back. Okay, there we go. We got through. Seer actually got the extra turn this time. Hooray! Amazing. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's one of those annoying things. This is where like a second Prince Kaimar is so good. You can totally do it Renegade though, but you just have that randomness. It's why I like to put the Renegade on the second wave reset so that it basically like we can just deal with the randomness on wave two and then we get to wave three and it just it's super smooth because it's the Kaimar reset. So, you know, just these budget things for people that have uh, Seer, Lydia, Kaimar, uh, 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 Brogni but don't have a second Kaimar, you know, that, 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 that poor budget situation. But anyway, we come through, actually it was our fastest run there, 27 turns. Um, but you get the gist, Lydia enables Seer. There is one alternative champion, but really only one uh, to this, which is Ghostborn. Now he doesn't work in this team. I don't have a Ghostborn, as you can see, to show, them off, uh, to show it off in comparison, but the idea is that he comes in, he puts decreased defense and increased attack. Now, the decreased defense can't be resisted, so that's the only reason you might run it. You wouldn't do it for Doom Tower, but for dungeons, you might. Uh, he can be an alternative to Lydia here, because Lydia's decreased defense, there's always a 3% chance you can be resisted, and that can break some speed runs for dungeons. Uh, and he does give one buff, not as many as Lydia. So it depends on the teams that you're running. You can make it work. It obviously requires a much different setup. Lydia, obviously, in comparison, decreased defense and weaken. She does make your Seer hit much harder. Strengthen and increase speed. It's two buffs instead of just one. So it is much stronger there. But that's an example of a team that you can run. Uh, for Arena, um, what I wanted to show you, I don't actually use her here, but here are some examples of teams where people are using her in, I'm just in gold too at the moment because I was uh, lazy and wasn't playing. <laughs> uh, we've got like this team. This is a good example of a defensive team. We've got a Lydia in the lead. We've got a Brogni, a Krisk, and a Valkyrie. Not a great team, to be honest. Um, yeah, they're obviously going to be building high resistance. I don't, I don't see all of them having high resistance. I feel like they're just going to get stripped. Seems pretty weak to me, but you get the idea if it's a defensive team. The Lydia Aura is going to help lock them down. They could probably have quite a lot of damage coming from Valkyrie and just adding up in the shields. So yeah, it's interesting, but not amazing. I'd say that's quite a weak one. Uh, let me see over here. Yeah, there's another Lydia team. This is a much scarier team. So here we go. We've got Lydia in the lead. We've got Duchess, Necra, and Candrophon. So that's a very scary team. The idea here is that we've got that Lydia Aura is going to be protecting the Duchess and the Necra. So that's pretty spooky, right? Both of those can build lots of resistance. She's going to add it up and make it very hard to hit through them. Um, Candrophon, when he gets a kill, now you've got to get past Lydia's block revive as well. So that's going to be very difficult. If they, if you don't bring block bu debuffs for whatever reason, uh, the decreased defense and weaken is going to ensure that Candrophon wipes you out completely. Uh, so yeah, it's just pretty powerful. Then the increased speed, the strength in is going to be protecting Necret, going to protect Duchess, also protecting Candrophon. So a good tanky team right there. I think that's a very scary one, showing where Lydia can totally work. We have her over here in a weird sort of speed team. Definitely a bit funky right there. <laughs> Not a huge fan of this, uh, but I guess it's okay. The problem is like, yeah, you'll come in, you'll debuff them, but it's not going to be speed tune. Leorius is going to be chilling. So again, if they have like a cleanser, it's going to be a bit awkward. Leorius is not going to kill them. Uh, and then again, another sort of defensive team here uh, with Lydia to Hanarak. Again, a bit of an awkward one. I don't see it being super good. So yeah, let's, let's see. Any other examples? Like I, I think the one with the Necrat was the best for a team. This one's actually pretty nice. So Lydia with an Uko, that's a kind of nasty combo. So once people start dying, the Lydia is going to start you know, if they try to revive, that potentially can revive Uko, revive the block damage, throw it in with like a more to Macabre, a tanky defensive specialist. Could be kind of spooky. It'd be good, again, with like a Withy or something in there as well. Could potentially be pretty tough. Interesting team right there. But yeah, you get the idea. She definitely is used. Um, we can throw together a team and we can see how it works. So let's throw together a team and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so here we go. This is a pretty pretty budget version of a team, I think, that we've put together. We're going in. We've got Lydia. We're going to set her to priority one this, and then priority two on this. We've got Mighty Uko. Now, unfortunately, my Mighty Uko doesn't really have much resistance, so we're not going to benefit too much there. But I do have an Ultimate Death Knight who does have a ton of resistance. So I think that's going to be a good combo, actually. There we go. And he can do one and two. Lovely. Uko. Yeah, I guess Uko, we can just do it, do it like so. Like one and two. He's going to cast Uko's Mercy anyway, so we'll leave him to it. Magnar will set him up like this. One and two. And there we go. That seems pretty good. We'll go in. Let's see how it works. So even though we're a go second team, because Lydia is fast, uh, she might get nuked at the start is the only consideration. She might get nuked. We actually outsped them. They're kind of slow. And I do think with Mighty Uko, it should be a pretty good combo because of the block buffs. That will help Lydia actually get her debuffs out there, which I think is going to be pretty powerful. So if we like put it on manual here, actually we'll go in, we'll do the smacks, we kill half of them, which is pretty cool. Uh, and you're going to see now, we'll actually use this just for damage at this point. But watch this, she's going to attempt to revive. Um, yeah, I guess we could just, we'll just A1 actually, here we go, A1 for a bit more damage. She attempts to revive, Lydia comes in and actually blocks it. And now her revive move is on cooldown, they're in trouble. That's basically how it works. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, we'll just go in. We'll just kill off Duchess now. So they're in trouble. And that's sort of the use of, of Lydia and what she can do. We just have to sort of hope we get through this. Um, unfortunately, Lydia is going to come back to her debuff faster than Uko will come back to the cleanse. So that's going to be a little bit awkward. But there we go. We take down the Duchess. Works pretty well. Okay. In this situation, you're of course gonna be better with Lydia. We'll see it against a different team. You're gonna be better off building Lydia with a reaction. That's gonna be good. Uh, you could even build her in stone skin if you wanted. That could work as well. Uh, let me see here. Uh, none of these teams are very good. Let's refresh it and see if we can get a stronger one. This is gonna be pretty nasty. We'll see if this one works. I don't know if it will or not. <laughs> it's, this is where the stone skin randomness comes in, right? Do we resist the Madame strip is the question. Here we go. We need Uko to resist it. Uko didn't resist it. That's pretty bad. Luckily, Uko stole the block damage. Uh, we stripped off some of their buffs. This is where I suppose the Uko AI becomes a bit awkward, but we actually blocked damage for two turns. So it looks like we're still good. Uko's revived everyone hilariously with block damage as well. Uko being a troll. I love it. So he should have single target attacks. It goes on to our ultimate death knight who actually absorbs it with block damage. There we go in, we go in with a good hit. Now if Arbiter tries to revive him, they're out of luck. I think they're gonna die before they get a chance, but if she did, block revive gives Lydia an extra turn, gives us a chance to come back in. It's also where Lydia with the reaction could be quite useful because if Lydia is alive, obviously the, um, the block revive is stronger. It's definitely a lot stronger. So there we go. I thought that was a pretty nice showcase. That was pretty cool. Um, I think these bomb champions would really mess us up <laughs> with this team. Here's another Lydia. We can see Lydia versus Lydia. Who wins? Probably probably him in this scenario because we don't have a block damage. That seems like probably a pretty bad, pretty bad, uh, bit bad one. We're running a, a Spirit Affinity Nuker against a Trunda. I think he'd win that one. We don't have reaction, but yeah, you get the gist. That's what she can do for you in the arena. Not a bad champion. She definitely has a place. I don't think she's super amazing. Like, uh, she's not the best of the best. When you look at the top teams, you might see her in there sometimes, but she's not going to be in super often compared to these other champions that are going to be stronger. Uh, the issue sort of being it's difficult for her to get her debuffs out, basically. There is one, again, going in with the Uko. So it's kind of a nice combo right there. Uko being a recent fusion, so you could have them in combination. Uh, but you can see, and you can flick through these top teams yourself. I've hopefully given you a few different ideas for teams that you can use her in there in the arena. Um, so yeah, she's, she's definitely a potential option. Now, uh, let's jump into Hydra. Let me jump over here, hit play. Uh, oh, I forgot to show it to you. Always professional on an upright stream. So I've shown these this team several times. I've shown several different teams with Lydia for Hydra. There's lots of things you can do. This is actually my nightmare run from this week. I, I actually forgot to do videos or last week. I forgot to do videos on it, which was really stupid. Uh, and we've not quite used her to fullest potential right there. But basically what Lydia can do for you coming in here, I'm running her with Inquisitor Shemail. So you'll see whenever we do these AOE attacks, Inquisitor Shamael is going to be counterattacking. She's going to be counterattacking. And it's all just sort of going to blend together. 
there she goes in. She's counterattacking again. And you can see just how much boosted turn meter we're going to be getting onto our lead position. Boost turn meter, boost turn meter, boost turn meter. He's going to kill himself. Actually kind of a benefit uh, because of this block damage here. Though he might, I might have forgotten and got him killed again when we revive him because this was on. Uh, with this team, we don't have block buffs. And this is Nightmare Hydra. As you guys know, I do consider block buffs to be probably the most important uh, of debuffs. Um, we kind of got away with it here. So it's definitely a bit messy. Maybe I restarted this run. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, he's gone and he's killed himself again. I think I think we just went with it. Or did I restart this one? No, no. Yeah, we just went with it. There we go. Uh, but Lydia, because she has block buffs, single target, she can come in and she can do the job. Now, there's going to be some problems with it. Like right here, it's a little bit of an issue because we'd love to get block buffs on Mischief for that extra layer of safety. It's just not possible. We don't have Hex. It's a single target attack. It will get redirected. But it's very good for her to put block buffs onto the Head of Suffering, right? He puts that Reflect Damage out. You could actually see right there, the Reflect Damage really messed us up. We're in for a pretty bad time. We don't really want that to happen. Uh, she can block it on him, which is very useful. The most useful, if we skip ahead, if we get, yeah. So Head of Wrath comes in, and this is where, yeah, there you go. You can actually see it right there. He comes in. We're going to switch it to manual. We're just going to make sure to put that single target block buffs, uh, yeah, block buffs onto Head of Wrath, and that's very useful. Downside in this scenario, we'd love to block buff Suffering. We'd love to block buffs him. Um, does get a little bit awkward to get block buffs on everyone, like the Poison Cloud's going to block some stuff. I just always prioritize it on Head of Wrath. Try to keep it at two stacks just to be safe as much as possible. You really don't want him getting the reflect damage and the block debuffs. You don't want him getting increased attack. It's going to wipe you very quickly. Suffering is sort of priority number two and uh, so on and so forth. I think right here, because we're running with Geomancer, we can put burns on. So sort of working the two together, placing burns, placing single target block buffs. It does mean that your Hydra run is going to be fairly manual intensive. Uh, but it can absolutely work. So there you go. I mean, we've got Krisk in here. Aside from the Krisk, we've got uh, four epics. So it's a reasonably budget for like a nightmare. It's reasonably budget. The Krisk is sort of the big one that's uh, difficult to replace. But you can see we ran it through, uh, ended the battle at 37 million because that's enough. I always, I'm always nervous, right? I always go for 1 million more. So it's 36.6, I think. I always do 37. We actually did 38 by accident. Um, just to be safe, if I pause it right there, you can see in terms of the damage, in terms of what people are doing, compared to the main damage dealers, they're doing 15 and, and 10 million if, effectively. Lydia, even with that crit rate, 2.7. It's not a ton of damage, but it's not nothing either. The War Master procs, uh, it's okay. You know, it's not too bad. A chunk of that damage, a good chunk, is certainly going onto the Head of Torment. So there's definitely an argument to be made to not build her with any damage, to try to keep Torment alive. No War Master, nothing like that. It's certainly something you can consider. Uh, but it's, you know, it works. It's not the worst thing in the world. So I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. Uh, you can see Krisk with Brimstone is doing more. Godseeker, she's out damaging Godseeker. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> That's Lydia. So yeah, she's really good. She's very strong. Let's actually take a quick gander. Did anyone else in the clan run... Lydia in some of their higher keys. Yeah, here we go. Look at this. 132 million. It's an Acrisia team. Really nice team, actually. I love this. So what you got going on? Obviously, this is a uh, a much stronger team than what we showed. Inquisitor going in there with Lydia. So it's again that combo. You can see we've got the shield set here. That's really for Doom Tower waves, but it works just fine here. And it's Acrisia being super, you know, 94 million. I mean, come on. Uh, and then Chris in as well. Cardial. Yeah, we got Provokes from Cantra. That's just an insane team. Really like that. Lydia. Here's another Lydia. Very nice. So a Lydia team again. This is a good one. Another fairly budget one, I would say. Uh, if you've been playing for a good while. We got the Husk and Geo for damage with Shamail and Lydia. So it's the same combo that I was using. Then we've got a Taunting Set Nekmothar giving us the lead. Giving us the Provokes. And then Archbishop for the AoE block buffs. Uh, and uh, healing the team as well. Lots of healing from him. So this is another really good combo too. Bearing in mind that the most common champion, actually not being used in these top teams, here we go. The most common champion is probably that Ugo, right? For AoE decreased defense block buffs because Lydia comes in and she gives you AoE decreased defense plus weaken bonus. Uh, having someone like Archbishop coming in for the block buffs can be good. He's going to give you increased defense and shielding for your team. 
Lydia is going to be giving you strength in for your team. So you can actually build a really uh, tanky team. Uh, yeah, very survivable team, very effective team with these champions. Obviously, the danger is that it's a bit gear intensive. You don't have a proper revive with this team. In fact, you've got no revive with this team. So if Nekmothar dies, which can definitely happen, um, you can be in trouble, right? If anyone dies, especially after being eaten by a Hydra head, they come out, they've got no defensive buffs, they get taken down. You can be in it for a tough time. They've got lots of increased speed. You've got kind of redundancy there. So you're going to be well covered. Hopefully you can stay ahead. Um, but yeah, definitely something to watch out for, but it can absolutely work. Uh, and the reason I said it was budget is that both Necmo and Archbishop were guaranteed champions this year. So, you know, if you've been playing long enough to get Lydia and you were able to get those two champs from guaranteed this year, you could definitely build this team and it's super effective. So there are some ideas on some of what she can do. Any more Lydia's here? Doesn't look like it. Um, you can see Ugo is sort of generally a bit more preferred because Ugo brings you the cleanse with the heal. Leech is very helpful and the block buffs AoE. But Lydia is a really good one to put in. Here's another Lydia. Again, super insane team. <laughs> very similar to the previous one. You know, Cardial, Chris, Akrizia, and uh, yeah, Cantra. That's nuts. That's a super good team. But you get the gist. She's very strong. Very, very strong. Great champion to consider. There's mine. Um, we cancelled it early, but we certainly, I mean, just to be clear, this team would not go anywhere near as far as these other guys would have gone. Uh, 132 million is way beyond anything that I've done, of course. Uh, 94 million is, I think, just a little bit ahead of my record. It's actually very impressive. Maybe I'll build up that team myself. I actually use those champions for Brutal, though. <laughs> kind of funny. But there you go. Lydia, great champion. Um, yeah, hopefully that was clear. Hopefully that was clear. Uh, bam. Nightmare, Hydra viable, Ultra Nightmare, Clan Boss viable, viable for Lake Game Arena, Doom Tower clearing stuff out. I forgot to mention, it's the easiest way to kill Frost Spider as well. Block Revive on the Frost Spider, super good. She's good for some Doom Tower bosses. Um, yeah, not super essential. I, I've run her for sure as an increased speed champion just to up the damage. I have run her on uh, Magma Dragon. I don't think she's in my current... No, she is. Never mind. I'm, I'm lying to you. She is in my current team. This is my Magma Dragon team. I actually really like this team. Really fun one. She basically massively ups our damage and gives us increased speed and, and helps us stay tankier with this. Uh, then you've got... Um, it's really funny. you got a really good chance to provoke with the Strengthen, right? With Eurost. So the Strengthen that Lydia puts out, he has Strengthen himself. Really good chance to just provoke uh, the Magma Dragon, which is cool. And Krisk is going to extend it. So it makes it really consistent. And these, these guys kill it. So we do it in, what, 2 minutes 30? It's not the fastest, but hey, it's not too slow either. Lydia showing up in some of these other teams. So she's really good for these sorts of bosses. Uh, you wouldn't run her for Nether Spider. She triggered the AoEs. Maybe you could run her here. I don't know if anyone does. Yeah, there we go. Seedler running her right there. So she is viable there as well for this boss. Not super common, but she's definitely in there. Um, and you could probably run her. You could run her for this boss as well. Let me see. Uh, yeah, there we go. Again, Chunk, he's running her here as well. So she's definitely viable uh, for this boss too. Again, not super common, but she is someone that you can run. I say that's sort of the theme for a lot of these bosses is that she's not super essential apart from, you know, Frost Spider is probably the most common. Uh, Magma Dragon, pretty common too. Um, yeah, there you go. Lots, lots of info. That's Lydia. Thank you for watching. If you guys have any other tips, anything I've forgotten, let us know. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.